Hi, my name is Simeon Neil Asher, and the trigger point of the week this week is the pectoralis minor muscle. So let's uh, let's hunt in the software for pectoralis minor. Beautiful, love this image actually. Beautiful image. So again, as always, let's start with the anatomy. The pec minor. Um, uh, important for a number of reasons which we'll explore, but it, it takes its origin from the second, third, fourth rib um, and <clears throat> it inserts into the coracoid process of the scapula. Um, and its job really is to sort of protract the scapula. Um, so we, we see it in people with upper cross pattern, people with round shoulder postures. It's very much connected with posture. And again, if we think about the, the insertion of it, um, it inserts in the coracoid process next to coraca brachialis, uh, which really is part of brachialis and biceps brachii, and also um, uh, it, so so it's so the the pec minor is kind of very much involved. Uh, in, in, in shoulder function as well as sort of chest. Also, obviously, because of the ribs, it has a, an attachment for, uh, for rib and lung function as well. So, um, short, squat, powerful muscle. And let's have a look at this trigger point map. It's a very interesting map, really, isn't it? Because we have this kind of uh, slight interdigitation here uh, of pain. Uh, patients feeling pain sort of in the chest, sort of locally. But look, it also goes all the way down to the little finger. So it's almost like a differential diagnosis with a C7 uh, sort of dermatome or ulnar nerve sort of ulnar neuropathy. So so again, if someone comes in with perhaps what looks like a, a C7, uh, sorry, C8, T1 kind of uh, nerve root, C7 is the middle finger, C8, uh, T1 kind of nerve root pattern, dermatome, it might be worth checking for trigger points in the pec minor. Um, as we said before, involved in sort of respiratory conditions, COPD, um, kind of accessory asthma, people with, with uh, struggling to sort of take deep breaths. But what I wanted to explore today was something else quite interesting. Now, sometimes trigger points can uh, cause the host muscle to be short and fat and inefficient. Um, and in this particular area, um, there's a close association with the pec minor to the brachial plexus and we can see sometimes cases of what we call a kind of myofascial brachial plexopathy where we get the brachial plexus is being sort of almost squashed or trapped by this tight pec minor and it really does happen actually a lot so someone with a thoracic outlet syndrome someone that's coming in with with um, you know uh, sort of a neurovascular condition into the hand and fingers well worth checking for trigger points in the pec minor muscle um, Trigger points tend to manifest near the coracoid, but they can be in any one of this sort of multi-pennate structure here. So a very important muscle to check if you suspect sort of neurovascular bundle pathology or, or thoracic outlet syndrome. So that's uh, the pec minor, beautiful trigger point, C8, T1 dermatome, um, differential diagnosis, uh, chronic round shoulder postures, certain sports, uh, people playing the violin, sitting in these kind of cramped postures for any length of time. All of these are, are sort of comorbid factors for trigger point development. Hope you found that interesting. Very much look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks for watching.